In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get a better texture map using the Unwrap UVW map and how you can manipulate the flatten mapping within the UV tile to get a better kind of consistent pattern. Um, so I just have this really basic object, so I'm going to apply a UV Unwrap UVW map to it and then open up my UV editor. And then once I'm in the UV editor, I want to select my polygons zoom out, select all the polygons, and go to mapping. And you could try all three of these and see which one produces the best on flatten mapping. But I'm just going to use um, flat mapping for this example and say OK. And then you could zoom in, and this is the, the unrolled map here. So you can see if I now select element, which is this button here, and select one of these, you can see once you select it, the corresponding edges will be highlighted in blue so that's this edge and this other edge but it's not the best layout for trying to create a pattern if I'm gonna move this to like um, Rhino or AutoCAD for example so I can use these tools up here move rotate scale and freeform mode to better manipulate this so they're where I really want them to be so I want to make sure elements selected then I can move this um, and you'll notice that so this map is going to have to be reversed, but that if I select this, that means this edge is the same as that edge. So I need to select this and actually rotate it. So I'm going to rotate this thing about 180 degrees. And now if I deselect the element, you can see if I select um, those two polygons, that those are right next to each other. So it's a little dif distorted because of the curvature of the form, but this uh, starts to make it a little better. So let's go ahead and move the rest of these around here. So this one can go there. I want to move these two out of the way. Right, this one goes at the other end. So this one goes down here and also should be rotated. Plug that by there, and move this one here. You know, and then once you get these to be um, where they should be, then you could select actually all of them and kind of scale them up so that they take up more of this tile. You really want it to be as big within this tile as possible, so that uh, the resolution will be the best possible. So I could also you know find out where these are located. So if I select this one. That's up there. Just like that one. That one's up there. So now, if I go and draw a pattern over these, I can make sure that you know it's lining up pretty well from one, um, from one flattened surface to the next. But you can even do a, a sort of finer resolution. So if I select my vertex of object level, you probably want to move this thing a little bit closer. So let's get it a little closer in there. Make sure all these are lined up. But once you're pretty happy with it, you can select you know vertices and start moving oops I gotta deselect my element there you can actually start moving vertices to get this really close and when you have it um, actually like very close you can select two of the vertices hit this weld button here and assuming they're close enough oops I actually broke it that's a split sorry so you actually gotta hit this stitch here so you select everything and it stitches it together select these stitch it doesn't always work so you kind of can just get it close but now you can see if I draw a pattern over this it's going to be consistent um, and you'll know that it'll, it'll transfer from one surface to the next surface okay so now that you have your texture unfolded and I could do you know much more work on this but for the sake of this tutorial I'll just stop there um, but once you have your texture uh, arranged within the UV tile you have to make sure it's not touching the edge but it's actually within the tile completely um, then you can close and then go to file, export, and export selected. Um, and you want to make sure you're um, exporting an OBJ file format. Um, if you wanted to, you could try to do file send to Mudbox, but it doesn't always work. And I found that this works uh, more often than not. So I'll use OBJ, and you just have to make sure your preset is set to Mudbox. That's very important. And then just go ahead and select export done and then once you're in Mudbox you can file open and select that um, OBJ and just open the OBJ directly 
and then you should get your model. It should appear fine. And if you go to the UV view, your UV tile should be laid out just like you laid them out in 3ds Max. Okay, so now you have your file. Um, you could do different sculpting commands. So you could use your sculpt tools and start to sculpt this. You know, one thing you probably want to make sure you're doing is using um, subdivision, uh, subdivided levels. So let's go to mesh, add new subdivisions, and let's just add a few here. And then also, whenever you're sculpting, it's a good habit to just sort of get into using the smooth tool to kind of smooth out after you've done some sculpting. Kind of eases it up a little bit. Okay, so once you've sculpted, you can go to the paint layer and start painting. Um, use your different paint tools. As soon as you start to paint, it's going to ask you to create a new paint layer. Um, here you have your different options. Diffuse, you can make a glossy layer or an incandescent, a sort of a radiant thing. Um, opacity, this would be like for perforation or a bump map. Um, so we're just going to start with diffuse here. And then we can choose a stamp image if we want to use a stamp. You can see what that does. Let's get that. There's a sort of pattern that it's projecting. I can increase the size if I want. I could change the color. And then you can start um, adding other effects like instead of diffuse, how about we add a new layer and let's do a um, bump layer. So I want to create a kind of bump texture on this. So I'm going to say bump. OK. And I can actually use the same stamp image here. You can see it starts to create a kind of bump uh, of the surface pattern there. Be careful you don't uh, do too much and get rid of it. So there's the bump. You could change the scale or the strength of it if you want. Okay, so once you have your object painted and you're happy with the different layers, um, then you can extract these. So if you go to Maps, Extract Texture Maps, New Operation, there's a few ways to do this, but I found this to be the best. Um, that'll give you this little dialog, and then you can generate all these different maps here. So we'll just say Extract, and they'll automatically be extracted. The other thing you can do is go to Maps, Extract, uh, New Operation, and then select, um, let's say you want to just take out the bo the normal map or the bump map. You can say uh, select normal map. So remember, you know, to create this bump, a really useful way to, to translate that to 3D Max is to use a normal map of it. So that'll um, kind of fake the shadows and it'll be, it'll look like more, um, more of an actual texture than a bump map. So I'm going to use a normal map. And then the key to using the normal map is that the target model is, um, so let's first say for example I added four subdivisions to this object. When I export this back to max, I want to export it from probably zero, level zero, or level one. So I could go, you know, I could go up a level if I wanted to, but if you choose the highest one, you know, if your thing's too complex, if your form's too complex, it's going to really bog down max. So the model I might export at level one, but then the texture map I can export all the way up at level 3. So it's really important that you change this to level 3 or the highest level that you're doing the painting on. Um, there's a few other settings here that we don't really need to get into but I would just keep the defaults of these. Uh, the map size, if you're rendering a super high res image then you might want to increase this to you know 4000 or so. Um, if it's a gigantic image you want to go even higher but I think uh, you know, for the sake of this, I'll just do 1000. Um, for compatibility, you can say 3ds Max. That's also very important. Um, Max works differently than Maya, so you want to make sure that's selected. Okay, and then we're doing a texture map, so that's also has to be selected. So once you have have all these selected, you can begin to extract them. You just want to make sure that you also have a uh, base file name. So I just uh, browsed and I changed, a f I selected a file that I want to name everything. And so then once you've done that, the extract button will appear and then you can hit extract. And then it should say map extraction finished successfully.